The former United States National Security Advisor, Colin Powell, once said, and I quote, A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. End of quote. The aspiration of eradicating human trafficking and violence against persons from our society depends largely on the five-pronged strategy of policy, protection, prosecution, prevention, and partnership. You are watching Naptip on the Move, and I am Emmanuel Okeke. Glad to have you join us. Today, we will bring you various activities of the agency get towards fulfilling its mandate. We will start with a cut visit by the executive members of Soroptimist International seeking to partner with Naptip. Take a look. A delegation from Soroptimist International, a recognized organization for promoting the rights of women and girls, led by Nneka Asoluka, recently visited the headquarters of NAPTIM. The leader of the delegation and president of Soroptimist International Nigeria gave a background of the organization. Soroptimist International of Nigeria is a women's service organization. It's, a, it's an international organization in that um, it's uh, our headquarters actually is in, uh, in the UK. And then we have um, a consultative status with the UN. We are all about the betterment of uh, women and girls. So we, we focus mainly on the education, empowerment and enablement of the woman. She then spoke on the purpose of their visits. Um, if you look at the people trafficked, we find out that women are a very large um, population. But uh, thank God that you know we have you to um, to you know to actually find, try and strategize and find out ways to reduce human trafficking part of this this world. We we want to extend our hand of uh, friendship, partnership. You know, collaboration, cooperation, you know, with NACTIP, you know, to um, join you in fighting this uh, menace that has uh, suddenly enveloped our society. Welcoming the team, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okat Donnelly, defined the elements of human trafficking and then pointed out issues that fuel the trend. Trafficking in Nigeria, there are so many factors, you know, responsible. But mainly we've seen that it's as a result of ignorance, you see, and that is why we've decided to extend our awareness campaigns to the rural communities because the people in the rural communities have little or no access to the internet, to the social media. And so these things we see every day and take for granted, they don't even have access to it, you know, and that is why the traffickers take advantage of them and they go to these communities. And when they see a community is becoming aware, they move to the next. So we have to be a step ahead of them. Illiteracy is also another uh, a major factor, really, uh, because if everybody's made to go to school, primary, secondary school, compulsory, by the time you're in secondary school, you already know, you already know the, 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 the signs of trafficking. Someone comes to you and starts to just say, oh, please, come on, I know what you're about, and they'll report it immediately. She also suggested probable areas of collaboration. We can 
partner in terms of providing medical um, care, food, and even sponsoring some of them to schools or you know sponsoring their skill acquisition um, programs. And then prosecution. The problem we've always had is that um, people hardly report things. They see things but they don't say anything. In your awareness campaigns, you should tell them to report cases to NAPTIP and to report cases to you and bring it on here. To be a nice thing if you guys can get sponsors to assist NAPTIP so that we can have a joint operation with NAPTIP and the Soroptomist um, organization to repatriate our girls from West Africa. I think that will really be a very huge achievement. In recognition of her dynamic leadership, Soroptimist International Nigeria presented an award to the Director General of NAPTIP. To curb instances of baby seals in the eastern part of Nigeria, the Enugu State Zonal Command organized a meeting with relevant stakeholders. Stay with us. In order to curb the alarming rate of sale of persons, especially babies, the Enugu State Zonal Commander, Comfort Agboko, and her team met with members of the Enugu State Association of Home Operators in Nigeria. Addressing the forum, Comfort Agboko warned the members to desist from adoption services and sale of babies under the guise of assisting the needy. She then called on them to work with the Ministries of Gender and Women Affairs. Highlight of the event was the inauguration of a task force against the sale of babies. The meeting was very successful as the proper adoption procedures were outlined. The next report is from the Palace of the Nogi of the Gurban Kingdom and the Okaigun of Asian Land. Keep watching. To stem the tide of human trafficking, a delegation from the Naptip Benin Zonal Command, led by the commander, Nduka Wenwene, paid a courtesy call to His Royal Majesty, Ehizoje Ehiojero, the Enogie of Igweben Kingdom and Okaigun of Ishan Land. Receiving the Naptip delegation, His Royal Majesty, Ehizoje Ehiojero, commended the work of Naptip in the fight against human trafficking and also summoned traditional doctors from Ishan land to place a curse on human traffickers and native doctors who administer oath of secrecy on their victims. At the end of the event, the zonal commander, Nduka Wenwene, commended the efforts of His Royal Majesty and also provided sensitization materials to aid in the fight against human trafficking in Ishan land. At the headquarters in Abuja, a group of next generation female leaders under the auspices of African Women in Leadership Organization visited the Director General of NAPTIP. The next generation female leaders from the African Women in Leadership Organization, led by its founder, Dr. Elisha Atai, paid a visit to the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadonli, at the agency's headquarters in Abuja. Commending the Director General of NAPTIP, Dr. Elisha Atai spoke on bridging the gap between female leaders and next generation leaders. Responding, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadoli, stated the importance of women in the society and leadership. The roundtable discussion was interactive as the members present sought professional advice from the Director General of NAPTIP. In Lagos, three ladies who trafficked a 27-year-old woman to Dubai for exploitative prostitution were recently convicted. Such good news. Take a look. A federal high court sitting in Lagos sentenced three women to jail for human trafficking offenses. The convicts, 29-year-old Precious Owo from Delta State, 25-year-old Blessin Gabriel, popularly known as Precious from Edo State, and 25-year-old Rose Gabriel from Edo State, were arraigned by NAPTIP on a four-count charge of recruiting a 27-year-old young woman for exploitative prostitution. 
Their offences include knowingly exporting the victim from Nigeria to Dubai for prostitution, organising, facilitating and promoting foreign travel which promotes exploitative prostitution. These acts contravene sections 13, 14b and 18 of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act of 2015. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Honorable Justice Babs Kwewumi, sentenced the three accused as follows. On count one, the first, second and third accused were sentenced to two years imprisonment with a fine of 250,000 naira each. On count two, the convicts were sentenced to five years imprisonment with an additional fine of one million naira each. For the third count, the first and second accused were sentenced to five years imprisonment with an option of one million naira fine each. Also, on the fourth count, the first and second accused were sentenced to five years imprisonment with an option of one million naira fine each. The imprisonment terms for the first and the second convicts are to run concurrently from the first day of arrest, while the third convict sentence is to run concurrently beginning from the day of conviction. All sentences are without a reduction with regard to the fine. In this report, members of the National Association of Nigerian Students visited NAPTIP. Let's find out why. Members of the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, led by their coordinator, Umar Farouk Lawal, recently paid a courtesy visit to the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Dame Julie Okadonli, at the agency's headquarters in Abuja. The Director of Project, Celebrating Leadership, Democracy and Good Governance, Ajayi Victor, stated the purpose of their visit. We are celebrating Leadership, Democracy and Good Governance Week and we uh, decided to select some few leaders in this country that uh, deserve our encouragement and that is why uh, our mentor, our sister, our mother was selected to thank you and every member of this uh, agency for, for, for the good job you are doing in this place. The Vice President of NANS, Olamide Odumosu, and the Coordinator, Umar Farouk Lawal, then presented an award of excellence and good governance. Receiving the members of NANS, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Oka Dolly, enlightened them on the mandate of NAPTIP. First of all, I want to thank you for this award and uh, I want to dedicate it to the officers and men of NAPTIP. Mm. <laughs> NAPTIP is the federal government of Nigeria's focal agency, saddled with the responsibility of combating human trafficking. It is mandated to coordinate all trafficking in persons laws. We have the powers to arrest, to prosecute offenders, to rehabilitate victims, to prevent occurrences, through sensitization and partnership with relevant stakeholders just like yourselves. She also highlighted areas of possible partnership. I see NANS as a very serious partner and stakeholder in the fight against human trafficking. The areas in which we want you to partner with us are in the areas of awareness and sensitization. We need you to arrange sensitization campaigns in all the universities. Second thing, in the area of reporting cases, when you suspect something, if somebody tells you I'm traveling abroad, somebody is going to organize it, somebody is inviting me, please beg them not to go. And don't stop at it. Call NACTIP with that information. Give us the information of whoever it is that is offering to take this people away. That is very important for us. As an organization uniting all Nigerian students, the partnership with NANS will go a long way to reach youths who are usually targets of human traffickers. To create more awareness on issues of human trafficking, some schools in Abuja participated in a debate.
As part of its efforts to create awareness on the ills of human trafficking and child labour, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, in collaboration with Junior Chamber International and the Federal Capital Territory Universal Basic Education Board, organised a school debate tagged GWO Shuaga Secondary Schools Debate. The five schools in attendance were JSS Jikwe, JSS Dutse Sagwari, JSS Life Camp, JSS Tuduwada, and the Overcomers International School, FHA Lugwe. The welcome address was delivered by JCI ASO President Oluafemi Fadairo. Goodwill messages were delivered by JCI Senator GWO Shuaga, one of the founding fathers, and Rashid Adeni Balogo, the JCI National President. The debate addressed various topics on child labor, illegal migration, and human trafficking. Representative of the Director General of NAPTIP, the Director of Public Enlightenment, Arinze Orakwe, expressed satisfaction on the success of the event and spoke about plans to expand the sensitization program to other schools across Nigeria in partnership with JCI. An award was presented to the Director General of NAPTIB for her sustained efforts in the fight against human trafficking. After the event, certificates and prizes were presented to the winners of the debate. JSS Dutse Sagwari emerged champions of the 2018 GWO Shuaga Junior Secondary School Debate. Human trafficking is one of the worst crimes on earth. It is a grave violation of your human rights. The victims of human trafficking are majorly women, youths, children and men who may never live to tell the story. These victims could be your wife, daughter, mother, sister, brother, child or relative. No one deserves to be trafficked. NAPTIP has intensified its effort against this heinous crime. But we need your support. We need you to join this fight. Government officials, corporate organizations, traditional rulers, religious leaders and the organized private sector have enlisted in this fight. What are you waiting for? Join NAPTIP to end this global moral epidemic now. Report cases of human trafficking to these NAPTIP hotlines 0703 00 00203 NAPTIP 80 02 Ensuring a human trafficking free nation. The Enugu State Zonal Command of NAPTIP recovered a boy of about two years old from his buyer in Obosi, Anambra State. We have to break protocol to reveal his face as we plead with all well meaning Nigerians and anyone who can identify him to please inform his parents and relations to visit the NAPTIP Zonal Command in Enugu State with relevant documents and medical records for identification and reunion. Please be informed that all documents will be scrutinized and further medical tests carried out to ascertain claims. If anyone has a lead, please call 0708-060-1803-0708-060-1803. It's now time for the Victim Story segment. It promises to be very enlightening. Don't go away. I met my burger at Lagos, we call, we, we call out the traffickers burgers. I met him at Lagos in the public transport. So in the, I was standing with a lady waiting for a bus. We, when they stopped, I entered. I don't know, maybe the lady was with them or something, I don't know. But when we entered the bus, that was 2011, they were, the one man was discussing about Libya. He said he was working, that he, has a, he, um, he was working as a manager in one company in, Lake, in Libya before the fight and after the fight now the fight was now the fight now that the fight is over they destroyed so many things and they need workers factory workers they need black people they are very nice people they are accommodating people so the man asked me what i do i tell him that i was i finished my ond i'm looking for a job i was in the in lagos, in lagos. he said okay he asked me if i had an international passport i said yes i have one he said okay the thing now that he's going to help me if i have money if I have money, he will take me to Libya, that they will pay me $1,000 in the factory work. And there, the work is not hard. 
just cleaning job. They'll pay me $1,000 every month. I said I didn't have any money. So the woman that went at the bus with me was begging them. They said, I know how they can help, uh, they can help her that she wants to go. So the woman told me that let's beg them if they can take us without money for each day, we'll pay them. I accepted, I told them, they said, okay, no problem, that every month he would deduct $200 um, from my salary, that whatever God has written for me, my destiny, nobody can change it, that this is my luck now, I shouldn't miss it. I just accepted. I just accepted. Even to follow them, I followed them. From that day, I disappeared. My, parents, my people did not hear from me again. The next day, they took me with some other girls that they brought that evening. They said, we are going to swear oath for them that we might reach there and I will turn against them, that they will fall into trouble, so that we will not talk if we get there. We accepted, we said, okay, no problem. They took us to the place at our papa. They gave us marks. In our body, they performed some um, incantations, or all those things with lizard and everything. Then from there, the next day, they took us to Kano. They put us inside boots and followed bush to um, Niger. From there, they stopped at Zendel. At Zendel, we spent the night at Zendel, from Zendel to Agades. At Agades, after like three days, we took off to Libya. And in the, in the desert, we were attacked by, uh, like they say, they, say they, they were Malian, Malian terrorists or so. They stole all, they took, they took my phone, my wristwatch, they took our things, carried our fuel, all the petrol. So we were stranded, but the driver used his Turaya to call their company. After like four days, they brought the healers for us. So we spent like two weeks in the desert. Where they dropped us last was Saba. So when we got there, they gave us food. They asked us to take our bath. We asked, what are we doing here? What of the person that brought us? The people, the ghetto boys said, okay, wait, we should wait. Let him call the Mudi. That's the guy of the place. They called him, the man said, no problem, that tomorrow, the person that brought us will come and take us. So the next day, they said, okay, we should dress up. They dressed up, they took us to one room. They introduced us to two women. One was an evil woman, one was a Bini woman. They, Bini woman. they said, we should follow them. Okay. Then from there, our boga will come and beat us. So the women carried us to Black Shirt. They said they're taking us to the workplace. When we got there, it was a connection house. Girls, everybody, people, girls were right there. Everybody, they just dropped us. So we started talking with the girls, asking them, what are they doing here? No Nigerian girls they say, ah, see this one. No, 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 say they don't sell. And they will be laughing. And they come up with, if you don't do your customer well, you don't die. They were talking so many things. We said, ah, what is this? Okay, we want to talk to the woman. So the woman came. Then we were sold to her. She paid our burger three thousand dollars. And that three thousand dollars is times two because the prostitution one there is no snooze. They call it no snooze. Times two, that three thousand, you're paying six thousand. I refused. I said I wouldn't. She was like, okay, if you want, control money. Call us. Because me, I don't have time. So it wasn't really easy for me. I paid for two years. I got to Tripoli. I got to Tripoli. It took me time. No Libya, you can't work. It took me time to get contact, to, get contact, to start work. And I started getting sick. We were scared to go to hospital because if you go to test yourself in Libya, if you're HIV, if you're HIV positive, they will not release you. They will not release you. They will inject you to death. So I didn't know what to do. To buy tickets, I didn't have the money. So one of one of those men that were in the compound just decided to help me. The Nigerian man brought me to Nigeria embassy. When they were asking me questions, I gave them my passport. So the native, native woman that interviewed me told me that. This is my picture. I said, Is this me now? I said, Yes. She said, I'm sick. And two weeks later, I received the message on my phone that I was choosing to go back with my child. Right. This is to inform the general public that Perebi Nicole Otubo, a notorious human trafficker, is wanted by NAPTIP. Anyone with useful information on her whereabouts should contact the agency on this toll-free number 0703-0000203 or 0800-225-5627-847. You can email info at naptip.gov.ng. NAPTIP, empowered to protect you. For more inquiries and support, or to report cases of suspected human trafficking and child abuse, 
please call Naptiv Hotlines on 0703-0000203 or 0800-2255-627847 or email info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria and watch our videos on YouTube. It's unfortunate, but this serves as a warning. Be alert and be very careful. Traffickers also lie in wait in public transport. And whenever any proposition is too good to be true, you're probably right. It is indeed too good to be true. It's time to say goodbye, but I must urge you to report suspected cases of human trafficking, child abuse, and violence against persons to NAFTIP. A stage in time, they say, saves nine. I am Emanuela Okeke. Thank you for watching.